All right, greetings today, friends. Uh, it's Bible study time, and I uh, hope you're uh, ready to dig into the scriptures today. And if you're not, that's okay too, because we're going to dig you in, whether you like it or not. And if you stay close here, uh, we are going to tackle the entire chapter of John 8. A reading from uh, the King James Version. And so there's a little old English in there. And uh, if I run into anything that's difficult to uh, grasp, I'm going to try to explain it the best I can in uh, American uh, verbiage. And uh, in a layman's terms that you can understand. So I don't think there's too much in John 8 that's too confusing as far as Old English. Uh, once we get back into the Old Testament there's some that is a little bit harder to understand in the King James but you, you can get the uh, you can get the grasp if you just hang in there and uh, uh, get the the gist of what they're trying to say. So John chapter 8 Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Wow. Wow. Once we go, again, we have uh, a hypocritical situation. We see this in some of the ism countries where they drag a woman out and beat her half to death or hang her for adultery. But they don't bring the man out. Where's the man? If she's being tried for adultery, there has to be a man. Where is he? So you can see immediately this is a hypocritical situation, just loaded with hypocrisy and uh, false religion. Um, they bring out this woman caught in adultery. And maybe she was, but now, so where's the man? He needs to be stoned also, or judged, or beaten, or whatever it is that is uh, according to the law of that land. But no, they bring just a woman out. And you can so see immediately that's just hypocrisy, okay? They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? You know, you come up against Jesus with a hypocritical movement to catch him in his words. Uh, be warned, you will be made the fool. And thus they were, if you follow the story here. And thus they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger and wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. All right, I'm going to have to don my hat here because I'm sweating like a hog. You'll please forgive me. All right. I'm sweating like a hog and... It was uh, just bodybuilding time, so the body got pretty hot there, and so I'm still kind of drooling, and so I'm going to don my hat, but that's okay. Anyway, back to Bible study here. In verse 6, And this they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him, but Jesus stooped down when his figure rode on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and rode on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Boy, isn't that wonderful. You who are without sin cast 
the first stone. Um, obviously, if there's adultery in a marriage, um, you know, you, you, you have grounds to be free. Uh, you also have grounds to forgive your wife or forgive your husband or whoever it is. But I think honesty is the utmost. Just step up to the plate and say, okay, I did this. You, you can't continue on a marriage in secrecy. There's got to be honesty regardless. It just honesty is always the right answer. Just say, okay, yeah, I, I was gone. I was off on a you know, trip or whatever. And it's like when you say that, just realize, you know, it's like maybe they're, you're, you are doing the right thing before God. And your my, wife might say, very well, uh, you made your choice. I'm divorcing you. And I have the right to divorce you, and she does. Or if you're a, a woman and you say, well, well, honey, while you were gone, I cheated on you and, and blah, blah, blah. And yes, he has the right to divorce you. But honesty, he also has the right to say, I forgive you. Or the wife has the, the right to say, I forgive you and let it never, ever happen again. She has the right, or he has the right, okay? You have the right for forgiveness, to exercise forgiveness. You also have the right to be free. They had the right to stone her, but where is the man? And Jesus knew this was a hypocritical situation. If the man would have been there and they both would have been caught in the adultery, then maybe it would have been a different story. But Jesus saw this, this was just hypocrisy. And uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees were filled with religion and they were also filled with sin. And he knew that. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Isn't that a wonderful thing? He didn't just say, I forgive you, go. You know, like the once saved, always saved. You're not once saved, always saved. If you go back into sin, your salvation is at risk, friend. You're, you're going to be lost again. Jesus didn't say to her, well, go back to your sin. He said, go and stop sinning. That's what he told her. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth with me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You, as a follower of Christ, because Jesus is gone, we are now the light of the world. Uh, dim as it may be, you know, a follower of Jesus Christ is a little lamp burning unto itself, representing Jesus Christ. We are little lights to the world. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. Jesus isn't going to judge you in unrighteousness. Your own sins will judge you. And he goes on, And yet if I judge, okay, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am the one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy Father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my Father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whether I go, ye cannot come. And he saith unto them, Ye are from beneath. So he's basically telling them, You're of your father, the devil. Basically, he's telling them that. Because you're of hell. You're children of Hades. 
I am from above. Ye are from this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. In this uh, modern age, and also back in those days, they worshipped everything, from cattle to mice to flies to mosquitoes to the sun to the moon to the earth to the sea. They worshipped everything, you know. And, and in this day and age, we have those that worship little fat statues, um, you know, guys with turbans on their head. They, they worship them. Um, but there is only one to worship that will bring salvation. And if you don't believe in Jesus Christ as the only Savior, you will die in your sins. And if you continue in your sin after coming to the knowledge of the truth, you will also die in your sins. Because knowledge takes action on your part. You see knowledge, you see it before you, you see something that has to be done, and if you turn and you walk away, you are now responsible. So I'm telling you, Jesus is the only way. Now you are responsible. It's responsible for you to take action. So take action. And that's how that works. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then ye shall know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. He is one of the few that walked this earth. He was God walking on this earth. You have many great men. Uh, I wasn't one of them that, you know, came from the womb and, and served the Lord. The Bible says that we are all sinners and there's none righteous, no, not one. So let's say that's all true. That's for Moses, for Noah, for Samuel. Um, obviously it was for Samson. Um, but eventually they realized uh, their sin and they turned wholeheartedly to God and they became very good and righteous and godly men. Um, is very interesting. Jesus makes it very clear that he is not alone. And that later on, as we get to the end of the book of John, or if you watched our Matthew series, when you get to the time of the crucifixion, Jesus cries out to heaven and says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? For the one time of all eternity, the sins of the world were put on Jesus, and it was very possible for that very one brief moment in eternity, in history, in creation, that the Father turned his eyes off of the Son. We don't know. I'm not saying that happened. But the Bible does indicate that Jesus felt for a very brief moment as if the Father had forsaken him for a brief moment. And Jesus said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That feeling that you feel as a non-believer or as a Christian in sin that is backslidden, that guilt, that separation from God, Jesus felt that for a brief moment, not because he was sin, but because he became sin and, and took all of our sins on his body, on his heart, on his soul. For that brief moment, perhaps God turned his eyes from him and he felt that and was devastating. As a Christian who turns away from God and becomes steeped in sin and eventually they feel far away and forsaken because of their sin. 
and they just keep diving deeper and deeper into sin to ease their conscience, but it doesn't work. Their lives just become more and more messed up. Okay, we've got a long chapter. Let's get uh, moving on here. As he spoke these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews, which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You want the answers to the problems in your life? Right here, friend. Here's, here's the answer to the problems of your life. Devour it, read it, study it, meditate upon it every day. And it'll see you through every problem you're struggling with. And, and none of us are beyond struggles and tribulations in this world. But we must continue on. And this book has the answer to see us on, see us through, day by day, step by step. To be free is a wonderful feeling, friend. Don't pass that up. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Son, you're free. Isn't that a wonderful feeling? If, you, if your father says, you're free, son. You're in Christ, you're free. When my heavenly father says, you're free. And he doesn't have to say words because I know it. Because I am in Jesus Christ. I abide in his word. I'm in his fellowship. Doesn't mean I'm perfect, but I know I'm free. I'm, I'm in eternal life right now. And that freedom right in here is a good feeling. You don't have to try and do something to earn your salvation because you have it. And the works and the fruits, they will come naturally by themselves. As you abide in Jesus Christ, they will just manifest in you and you will continue on in this life. And when you see things that need to be done and places where you need to be, then you will do them because God is leading you. It's a wonderful place to be free indeed. I love that. Uh, free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father, the father, the devil. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If you were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father, meaning the devil. Then said they to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus saith unto him, If God were your father, you would love me. So there, there's your distinction between religion and truth. If you love Jesus Christ, ultimately, he is the final word. That's where you have arrived into the truth. If you say, yeah, Jesus was a good prophet, or if this guy, this good teacher over there, he's a prophet too. No. He is the Messiah. God sent prophets, teachers, pastors, and they all should refer to Jesus Christ as the only way. If they don't, they're a false teacher. They're a false preacher. Jesus is the only way. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye of your father the devil. There he goes, he says it. You're of your father the devil. If you're in a religion and you hate, you're full of hate and you got, you know, secret skeletons and sins hanging in the closets and yet pretending to be, you know, religious, your father is the devil, not our heavenly father through Jesus Christ. And Jesus made it clear to them. Ye of your father the devil, in the lust of your father ye will do he was a murderer from the beginning, that was Satan, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. 
When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it, the father of lies. That's why there will be no liars in heaven, friend. If you're a liar, better stop right now, right this second, because you will not be in heaven. There will be no liars in heaven, because that represents Satan. Satan is the father of lies. All right, we're moving fast. John 8, we are now in verse 45, so hang on tight. We are steamrolling here. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convicteth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you believe me? Or why do you not believe me? Which is it? Why do we believe him or why do we not believe him? You're going to have to choose. Because there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, a line in the spiritual sand. And you're going to be on one side or the other. Why do you believe in him? Why do you not believe in him? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hath a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye dishonor me. And I seek not my own glory, there is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. That is a wonderful thing. When the day of my departure comes, I tell you, friend, I won't be sad. When this body goes to sleep, for, for a Christian, death is called sleep because it's just like, you know, you're, you're gone and then you're into the presence of the Lord. That will be a wonderful day. But until then, I strive on. Never seeing death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead, whom thou makest thou thyself. In other words, who makest thou thyself to be? The prophets died. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. They were liars, because he was not their God. They just chose religion as an occupation, because it was very comfortable, wealthy, very prestigious, and they didn't have to get their hands dirty. Very easy. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was... And here we go, folks. This means something. I am. I am means he is God. He is the creator. He is the almighty walking on this earth. That's Jesus Christ. And they took up stones because they know what he meant. Then they took up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. You want to know who God is? Look to Jesus Christ. If you want to find God, call out to Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So, John chapter 8, my friends, we did a wonderful job. We cranked right through it at steamroll pace. I hope you enjoyed it. May the word of the Lord be with you today. God bless you folks. See you next time.